Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Charles Hardcastle here from Joseph Barnes Wines in Saffron Walden. And I thought uh, the subject of this particular post should be Spanish white wines. Uh, because, you know, there is a feeling that Spain should be able to produce some really good uh, drinking white wines. Uh, but unfortunately, for various reasons, uh, excellent um, white wines of Spain are quite scarce, they're quite thin on the ground. However, on your behalf, I have rooted around and I think I've unearthed three very good examples of uh, Spanish white wines. And we have them here in front of us and we're going to taste them in a sec. Uh, we've got a Chaco leaf from the Basque country. Uh, we have a Videjo from Rueda in north, northern Spain. And then we have a, an Albarino from uh, Rias Baixos, uh, as I'm told to pronounce it, uh, from northwestern Spain up towards the Atlantic coast. So uh, let's start with the Chacoli first of all. Chacoli, um, as I say, comes from the Basque country. It comes from um, uh, the, the northern coast of, of Spain. And the best examples of Chacoli are to be found uh, at the fishing, uh, near the fishing village of Guitaria, where the vineyards are cut into steep slopes behind the village overlooking the, uh, the Bay of Biscay. Uh, and Chacoli is made from the exotically named Hondarabi Zuri grape. Uh, also otherwise known as the Petit Corbu grape in, uh, in southwest France. And uh, it's a curiously addictive stuff, is Chacoli. It's, um, it's slightly uh, tart, it's pleasantly tart, it's slightly salty, um, and it's immensely refreshing, it's delicious stuff. It's usually poured in the pink shoss bars, for a great height in the pink shoss bars of the Basque country. Pink shoss bars are the, the um, Basque equivalent of the Spanish tapas bars. Uh, and it's usually poured with great uh, panache from a great height and because it's slightly sparkling it foams and it settles down as I say to reveal this uh, this uh, appley, uh, sour, um, very refreshing white wine. So let's have a go. I'm not going to pour it from too great a height but I'm going to try and pour it, a little, uh, pour it from... Uh, oh, there we go. I'd make a terrible bartender in uh, the pink sauce bars but, but you get an idea really. Uh, there's the spritz, it's died down uh, to reveal an almost green, light green uh, uh, wine in colour. So we know that um, this is going to be a young, this is a young, uh, slightly tart, uh, refreshing white. Um, and what we're looking for with uh, Chacoli is not the aromas or the flavours, because they are really pronounced, not a complex wine. Uh, what we're looking for here is the minerality, the acidity. So uh, on the nose, yeah, I mean, we've got a bit of pear, uh, we've got a bit of, um, uh, of apple, tart green apple, that sort of thing. But it's the palate that's the important thing. There's a touch of honey there as well, actually. But it's uh, on the palate, which is what we're looking for. Mm. Mm. So on the palate, we're getting this, as I say, we're getting this apple sourness, this slightly salty finish. Um, it's almost eye-watering acidity, with piercing acidity. Really, really refreshing stuff. Fantastic food wine. This comes from an estate called uh, Bodegas Amets Toy, who are based in Guitaria. Uh, it's only 10.5% uh, ABV, uh, so it makes a really good summer glugger. Uh, Food-wise, we're going to go for um, oily fish, mackerel perhaps, with a sage sauce. Um, scallops, seafood scallops with the chorizo is very good, um, or just a simple plate of um, of uh, black olives perhaps. Cost twelve pounds fifty from us, and um, uh, I think it's I think it's a really really delicious wine. So I think you ought to go out and um, and bag a bottle for yourself. Cost twelve pounds fifty, as I say, uh, and you can savor for yourself the uh, Chack Attack. I've been waiting all week to say that. So that's the Chacoli. Moving on now uh, to the Videjo. This is um, a, a Videjo made by a chap called Angel Ruiz from Rueda in northern Spain. Uh, and it comes from a vineyard, a single vineyard uh, called, um, of Videjo vines called Martin Sancho. And Martin Sancho is one of the most important vineyards in Spain. Uh, because the the, cutting, the Videjo vines in the Martin Sancho vineyard themselves come from cuttings from a very small, almost third of an acre plot 
nearby of pre phylloxera of Videjo vines. Uh, and today, every, just about every single Videjo vine in uh, Rueda is related to the Martin Sancho vineyard, can trace its origins back to the Martin Sancho vineyard. Videjo, rather like Viognier, I guess, uh, nearly died out in the 70s. The Martin Sancho vineyard was um, planted in 76 uh, because they, did, they used to produce sherry like, floor, floury, almost rancio style um, uh, fortified wines. And as the demand for this wine waned, so the demand for Videjo waned. And the grape, uh, or the vines, uh, almost died out. But Angol Ruith is credited, basically, with reviving the fortunes of, of Videjo. And as such, has just been, uh, or recently been, honoured by the King of Spain uh, for, his, uh, for his work. So, let's have a taste. Uh, with Videjo, we're expecting uh, tropical fruits. Uh, waxy, peachy, slightly spicy... Uh, aromas, that sort of thing. So, colour-wise, I mean, a nice, a nice, gentle, pale gold in colour. Um, on the nose, yeah, well, we're getting these spicy uh, stone fruit peaches, apricots, um, uh, slightly honeyed. There's a bit of tannins. It does see an oak barrel, this, for a short period. They're, they're, you're detecting a bit of the oak. But not uh, not not too too much. So nice tropical fruit aromas, very floral aromatic aromas. Mm. Mm. And on the palate, similar sort of thing. I get really good acidity with this. Very refreshing. Good balance here between sweetness um, and acidity. Nice tropical fruit uh, flavours when I breathe out. The finish is lingering, quite lengthy. Um, slightly spicy, and again, rather like the chacoli actually. Um, I'm getting a, I'm getting a slightly salty finish to this. So um, uh, yeah, really good, really nice, good acidity, made for a good food wine. What are you going to eat with this? Well, uh, fillet of bass, um, a sea bass with uh, fennel, I think, um, would be good. Uh, seafood again, uh, pan fried scallops with some garlic, uh, parsley. A um, bit of red mullet, perhaps. Um, fabulous stuff. Really, really good. Um, it's, this weighs in at 13%. It costs £12.50 from us uh, and other retailers, I would imagine. And uh, I would say well worth, um, well worth grabbing a bottle. Uh, really good stuff. Um, so that's, a, that's the Rueda. That's a Videjo from Rueda. Mm, nice spicy aromas there. I like that one. So finally, we're going to move on to one of my favourite wines. Um, this is an Albarino from the wild, <coughs> excuse me, wild and rugged um, landscape of Galicia in northwestern Spain, going towards the uh, going towards the, the Atlantic coast. Uh, and Galicia is indeed a wild and rugged landscape. Uh, it was believed in medieval times to be the end of the, the edge of the earth, basically, where the land ended and the endless seas began. And the Albarino, this is a true product of its environment, really. It's a real wine of the sea, uh, is Albarino. Um, Rias, uh, uh, Baixos, where this particular wine comes from, uh, in, uh, enjoys, if that's the word, a, a wet maritime climate. So it's hard, to, it's hard to understand how grapes could even survive in this uh, particular environment. But they do. And you'd think, perhaps, that the wines uh, would be thin and slightly tart, a bit weedy, but... Thanks to modern viticultural techniques, uh, uh, such as canopy management uh, and ruthless quality control, um, they're producing, Galithia is producing some really good wines now, uh, particularly from the Albarino grape, which pleases, I have to say, on so many levels. It's got a lovely colour, a lovely golden hue, uh, delicious golden in colour. Um, and it's got lovely citrus aromas. Yeah, nice citrus, lots of lemons and limes. But again, with a bit of pear, a bit of, a bit of tropical fruits. Yeah, really good, really good. But you think with the aromatic and tropical aromas, you think you're gonna get quite a fruity, um, aromatic wine, but you're not actually. Albarino is quite dry, it's quite refreshing. It's almost like Viognier in that, uh, in that respect. Mm. 
I do like that, I have to say. I do like Albarino. So it's, as I say, it's dry, it's refreshing, good acidity, making it a good food wine. The, um, the finish is, is lingering, it stays with you for a little while. Uh, nice, um, nice tropical fruit flavours uh, when you breathe out. This is made by an estate called um, uh, Bodegas Terras Gouda. And it's a 12.5% ABV. Terras Gouda are one of the most important um, producers in Rias Baixas. And uh, it weighs in about 12.5% uh, ABV and it costs 15.99 from us uh, and a good food wine with this again you know uh, fish seafoods really good anything with a bit of um, maybe some Thai style um, food slightly spicy maybe some Thai style clams with chilies um, ginger a bit of turmeric um, be very good also very good with a mild curry I speak from experience um, so a good food wine but also very good by itself um, excellent stuff um, this this particular particular alberino is made from a strain called abadia de san campio which is a strain that's been developed by uh, terras gauda themselves and as i say it's really good 15.99 from us uh, and uh, to be quite honest i'm going to be taking this home uh, with me today it's one of my favorite wines so there we go there's the, uh, there's the three wines uh, that we've tasted today, the Chacoli, the Videjo, uh, and my particular favourite, the Albarino. I would urge you to go out and to see if you can grab a, a bottle of one, or all three of these, really, uh, and see for yourself um, uh, how good Spanish whites can be. Um, uh, so I hope, uh, I hope that's, uh, you've, you've enjoyed uh, that. I am going to have a top up here of the Albarino. Uh, and before I clean up, I'm going to uh, relax and we're going to enjoy the dulcet tones of Dexter Gordon from one of the greatest jazz albums ever called Go. Uh, and this is a track called Where Are I? Cheers. <laughs>